guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Today I wanted to show you the process I used to turn this piece of regular mat board or chip board into like a faux enamel or lacquer finish. Pretty cool, huh? It could be used for all kinds of things, whether it's the decorative inset on a book cover or a box, maybe a pin or a brooch. I think there's all kinds of applications that it could be used for. So if that sounds like a good time, let's get started. All right, like I said, I started with just mat board. So here is a piece of mat board and just a piece of parchment. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give the back a coat of just regular black paint. And the reason why I put a coat of paint on the black is just to balance out the moisture that's going into the board. Because I'll be painting the front side. Oh man, my nose itches. Of course, your nose starts to itch as soon as you start messing with paint or... Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, so it's just to balance out the moisture on both sides of the board so that it won't uh, warp in one direction or another more severely. Okay, and once this is dry, I will flip it over and put paint on the other side. And it can be any color, it doesn't really matter. Whatever floats your boater. I think today I'll use some of this, I don't know, it's like a burgundy. It's just a cheap uh, acrylic paint. So now on the front side, I will put one coat just nice and evenly and then I will allow that to dry and put a second coat on. I'm using matte board because that's what I have excess laying around, but you could also use chipboard. Okay, I'll allow this to dry and put a second coat on. Now that this is all engraved, I'm going to put about three or four coats of this matte varnish. You can also get the basics version. This is the professional, this is the basics version. They're pretty much the same, but any varnish that is good for indoor and outdoor use should be just fine. These are both in satin, but they both work as well. Mod Podge, on the other hand, is not going to work unless they have an outdoor version. Uh, the reason why I use the Liquitex is because it dries fairly quickly, as well as the other two I showed you, the DuraClear and the, uh... <laughs> what was the other one? Oh well, you can rewind. But I will have them on the um, my Amazon favorites on the booksmithables section. And of course you don't have to engrave. You can do some hand painting. I suppose you could do some sort of decoupage. I guess it depends on the look you're going for. There is the first coat and I'm going to let that dry and then I will put on a second and a third coat as well. And before we can move on from getting all these coats on and everything. It has to dry completely, completely. So once all of these layers of this varnish are dry 
And as you noticed, I did a little sand in between each one just because that's the general rule of thumb when laying down any kind of varnish, I believe, is to do a light sand in between. As long as the varnish is absolutely completely dry, um, we can move on to the last set of steps here, which is, you know, another sanding. <laughs> you might not have wanted to hear that. but you wanna make sure that all the, or at least most of the brush strokes, the ridges from the brush strokes are sanded down. If the varnish is not completely dry, then you will be sanding along and you'll pull up some gummy pieces. You do not want that. It's hard to fix that. Basically starting over is, <laughs> usually what happens, at least for me. And I like to wipe away the dust between the passes and then that way you don't get little bits and pieces caught underneath the sandpaper and gouging into the varnish. The sandpaper that I'm using for the major sand is 220. And as long as it is mostly smooth, then I can go down to a really, really fine grit. And this happens to be 1200. If you can find something in between uh, 220 and 1200, <laughs> that would be optimum. But I could not, at least not, not in my possession. There are some other things that you can use besides like something like 1200. You can use a piece of like a paper grocery bag. And then once you give it a good sanding with the fine grit sandpaper or a paper bag if you have it, then I take just a dry paper towel and I start buffing the surface. And then I'll do another once over with the sandpaper, the 1200. And then buff it with the paper towel. And then the more times that you do this, it will start to get shinier and shinier because of the buffing. If you have a Dremel, like this one, you can get buffing wheels. This is one that I made out of some wool felt and I use this on some different things, but let's see if it works. You just don't want to catch the edge of the board because it'll flip it. There we go. It's starting to shine up pretty well. And this is why you want to use the varnish that is indoor slash outdoor because something like Mod Podge won't hold up to this kind of uh, finish work. But if you want to be able to turn basically a you know, piece of paper into something that kind of looks like engraved enamel work, then that varnish is uh, going to be your best bet. On some of the uh, prototype pieces that I was making before, you know, making the video, I didn't even use the Dremel. I just used some sandpaper and a paper towel. And then if you have a microfiber towel, um, acts as kind of a polish after everything is sanded and buffed. Are you going to get it completely smooth and flat like a black lacquered grand piano? Probably not. However, it looks pretty good, especially since it started out just being a piece of paper mat board. I love the engraving underneath. So if you have a laser engraver, I highly recommend trying that out. It gives it just a I don't know, the, the engraving just really kicks it up a notch, I think. Makes it look like an authentic piece of 
you know, carved enameled wood. But if you do not have a laser engraver, all is not lost because after you put on your base coat of paint, you can do all kinds of things. You could do some hand painting. You could do some stenciling. You could probably even do some decoupage if you were really careful and made sure that the decoupage paper, tissue, whatever was really, really smooth. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do. And then when you get to this point and it's all shined up and ready to rock and roll, then you can decide what to do with it. You can make a big piece if you wanted to. It's kind of like having a piece of fabric. You can cut it up and do several things with it. But I have something in my head that I think I'm gonna try. I will be back in just a moment and I will show you. I decided to make a brooch out of it. This was a bezel I had in my stash and I was able to glue a pin to the back of it and also this piece of lace that just went on the back. I figured it would make it look a little bit more dressy, maybe, I don't know. I have in mind who I'm gonna be giving this to, so I thought that person would definitely want the lace around it. But anyway, I really like how it turned out I like how this method could be versatile depending on what you do underneath that buffed, polished finish. Whether it's hand painting or stenciling or some kind of an image that you decoupage or X, Y, or Z. But if you do have a laser engraver, I highly recommend trying out the engraving technique um, on top of the paint. I think it looks pretty cool. But I guess that is it for this one. I hope this gave you some ideas and a little bit of inspiration today. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. And I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your day. And I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.